Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you will see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic. And today I'm here to talk about season two, episode five of Amazon's Invincible, entitled This Must Come as a Shock. Uh, before I even get started, I want to apologize for the lateness of this video. I, I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but there's this norovirus thing going around. Uh, it's It attacks the stomach and it swept through my entire house over uh, the course of last week. Uh, it took me out for a couple of days, and then when I was better, it took my wife out, which then made it so that I had to run the household rather than, you know, taking out my time to watch shows, do my notes, record videos, etc. Uh, having said all that, I'm healthy now, working on getting caught up. Um, I have a couple videos coming out today, this one and uh, one for the fourth episode of Shogun, and a lot prepared for a couple of Mike's Musings videos coming as well, so join the Patreon if you're so inclined. Uh, and, and that's it. We'll get that guy. Just wanted to get that out of the way. I didn't want to just get up here, start talking and act like this video isn't late as fuck. Anyway, um, this appropriate, this is an appropriate title as a lot of shocking news is delivered in this episode. Uh, Mark learns about his new responsibilities as a brother father. Uh, Debbie learns about Nolan's new baby in the worst possible way. Uh, Donald learns about his true nature. Uh, and then we also had some exciting action sequences, really big and pivotal moments, and even a little bit of humor thrown in as well. I, I thought this was a great episode. That's exactly what I expected of this mid-season premiere. And to be honest, I expect this out of every episode going forward, which, is, I mean, I guess it's three more. Uh, but during the first four episodes, I expressed concern here in my videos over how, uh, how many different threads they were creating and setting up without moving any of them forward. However, I also added that with the first four episodes doing so much setup, that the potential was there for the back four to be all action and movement. And if this first episode is any indicator, that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, this episode opens right where we left off, with Mark recovering from the Viltrumite attack that saw Nolan captured and the Thraxen city destroyed. Uh, we then do a pretty healthy two-month time jump just immediately <laughs> and see that Mark's fully recovered and has rebuilt their city. Uh, we learned in the first half of the season that Thraxons age faster than humans, and Andressa, who is uh, Andressa, that, that's Nolan's baby mama, uh, voiced by um, Rhea Seahorn, is now old and wants Mark to take uh, her and Nolan's son back to Earth to raise him, since at this rate, she'll be dead in like three minutes. Uh, being half human, the baby ages slower than the Thraxons, but faster than us. I'm sure we'll see this dynamic at play when this, when this motherfucker is talking and walking and eating solid foods at, <laughs> at the start of the next episode. Uh, but of note here, the baby is constantly referred to as your brother by Andressa. And later in the episode, I think I think it's Debbie who says it. Uh, she says something to the effect of like, uh, he doesn't even have a name yet. And this is the the, the one con to the, the Prime's x-ray feature. I instantly paused it and instantly saw the name of the kid. And, <laughs> and I still don't think it's revealed by the end of the episode. So I, I guess it's meant to be like a reveal or at least to be like a moment. Like, like what are we going to name him? We'll name him Blake. Like, it's meant to be important some for, in some way. And I won't say it here. And it's not a big deal. Like I said, I, 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 the name's not tied to anybody who you're going to be blown away when you learn the name or anything like that. 
it's just like the x-ray can be a bit spoilery and like i don't care about the name but if you did care about the name and i, I feel like the the creators of the show care because they they went out of their way to not say it i just feel like you probably should have done a better job with handling the x-ray feature uh moving on I was really looking forward to seeing how Debbie was going to react to uh, Mark bringing home Nolan's love child with an insect uh, for them to raise. Oh, I, I, I think I was a bit disappointed. Like, she took it pretty well. I was, I was really hoping for her to go off. Uh, she mentions that Nolan's never on the hook for the lives that he destroys. He just leaves everyone else to clean it up. I, I, great quote. Um, love that. And to a degree, this same behavior seems to have been passed down to Mark. Like, while Amber's really understanding when he returns after being gone for so long, for two months, it feels like this can't last much longer, and then he leaves again. He leaves again. Uh, and, and Mark didn't destroy Amber's life, but there's a lot of mess he wasn't around for that she had to deal with on her own because he wasn't there, which we learned about in this episode, like the death of her grandfather and how that affected her, her schooling. And she downplays it, but Mark's not going to get too many more opportunities to leave before she gets resentful. So you couple that with Eve possibly returning to his life and obviously being someone who would be more uh, understanding and accepting of his lifestyle. And I can see the potential for a really nasty breakup between Mark and Am Amber. And that's unfortunate because I like I like Mark and Amber together as a pair. Uh, but this Mark and Eve thing feels like it's happening. Uh, at this point, I kind of want to split the video into two separate parts because that's largely what the episode does as well. It, it, it gets split into two missions. Uh, the main mission focuses on an incom incoming ship from Mars. We learn about... Uh, the new character Shapesmith's true nature. Uh, he assumed the identity of a real astronaut when Mark came to Mars to save them from sequence in season one, sequence in season one. And Shapesmith then hilariously reveals that the original astronaut whose place he took is probably under the control of the singular and terrifying Sequid hive mind and, <laughs> and piloting the ship to Earth for revenge. <laughs> but but he's so sorry. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that delivery by by that actor. Uh, the Guardians are split up with some going to handle the, the issue with Mars, the approaching ship from Mars, and the remaining Guardians staying on Earth to hold down the fort. Uh, Rex has the idea of recruiting Eve for the Mars mission as well, which which ultimately ends up paying off. They needed Eve on, on this mission. And Cecil has Mark come as well, which is how he ends up leaving Amber again. The sheer overwhelming nature of the sequence on the ship was a cool visual, but it also served to make the cliffhanger effective because they did a great job of conveying... There are so many fucking sequins that it's too much for even this group to handle. Like, going in, I thought, like, oh, no matter how many of them there are, they should still be fine. They got Mark, they got Eve, like, we're good. And, but there was just so many. And I, they, they found a way to visually make that believable, where I'm just like, yeah, that looks like that's just too many. They don't even have time to think. I was listening to a podcast on my way home about, uh, about how the Greek military... <laughs> about how the Greek military uh, used to fight. And the, whoever it was was talking that basically they, they were less organized. They would kind of like just charge at you when they fought the Persians. And it, it left them kind of like uh, on their back foot reacting. Like you don't know what to do because you got somebody right in your face right now. All your, like, like Mike Tyson said, you have a plan. Everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face. That's what the Persians were like. They had a plan until the Greeks just run up and punch them in the face. That's what happened here. The sequence were the sequence were the Greeks, <laughs> and 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 the Guardians were the Persians. Uh, the group that stayed on Earth, uh, they expected to be able to chill, but that Lizard King guy from the first half of the season is attacking the Pentagon with his crew. So Rex, uh, Duplicate, and Shrinking Ray have to go there to stop them. Seems like it's going to be an e easy mission, but uh, life <laughs> life comes at you fast. <laughs> um, the scene where uh, Nolan holds Mark in front of the oncoming train is still probably the best uh, moment of the entire series to me. But the way this mission at the Pentagon goes wrong is it's going to rank. Like, we see, I, I don't, I, I, I think his name was Komodo Dragon or something. Like, I, I, I again, I had to pause the x-ray to see these people's names. But one of the bad guys, the big one, um... He smashes so many duplicate clones to death that all he has to do is get down to the last two. He rams them together, and that's the end of Duplicate. And I was like, okay, so we're just going to be killing all major characters now. Then he, uh, Shrinking Ray tries to pull one of the uh, I'm going to expand from inside you and blow you up moves. And they do like a great kind of sequence where you can't really tell what's happening. Like, And you think that she's probably getting the upper hand 
and he's getting uncomfortable and he's feeling her grow and he's about to explode. And then he just goes yum with this blood filled smile. And now she's off the board too. Like, man, what, what a great moment. What a great moment. And then lastly, Rex is left by himself. Uh, he holds his own. Uh, he successfully Rex explodes the head of the guy who killed uh, uh, Duplicate and, and Shrieking Ray, but not without losing his own hand in the process and not before the episode ends with that Lizard King guy putting a gun to his head. So uh, we end with two really effective cliffhangers, um, great plot progression, excitement, intrigue, and yeah, I I'm ready for more. So um, not a lot to go over with Invincible. It it's pretty straightforward, but I'm going to close with a couple of quick thoughts. Uh, the stuff with Donald, I don't know how I feel about this. It, it, it doesn't really feel like it serves a purpose just yet. It feels like, like, let's just do a thing with Donald. It, 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 like, like kind of like a pointless subplot for the sake of having one. I, I hope and I feel like I'm probably wrong about that and that it's probably going to tie into the big picture a little bit later, but uh, that's how it feels right now. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with Nolan's books that he directed Mark to find and that Debbie gave away. Uh, they're clearly important. Mark's clearly going to need them, and I can't even guess how he's going to find them. So uh, pretty interested in that as well. So... Looks to be a strong back half of the season. Can't wait to see what they have in store. Till then, let me know what you find in the let me know what you thought in the comments. And until next week, peace.